is the Whitefish Range. For 50 to 60 miles, it rolls on down to the town of Whitefish. We have forests that are dense, intermixed with spruce and larch, and provide great wildlife habitat. The Whitefish Range Partnership is a group of local citizens with diverse interests who have come together to craft recommendations around how to manage the Whitefish Range. What we're looking at here is part of what we agreed upon in the Whitefish Range Partnership. Down here, part of the land would be designated for logging, and then another part would be recommended for wilderness. We've developed a set of recommendations that we've presented to the Forest Service for consideration about how to manage the Whitefish Range, whether it's going to be suitable for timber harvest, wilderness designation, whether it's going to be motorized, recreation, values need to be protected. Some of the people who started out at the beginning of our process hardly were even on speaking terms with each other. But they recognized that if you go into this kind of a process recognizing that everyone's entitled to their say and no one's entitled to their way, and if they can accept that from the beginning, it'll work. Everybody here has a legitimate stake in the management of the Whitefish Range. The wilderness advocates supported the increased timber harvest, and the timber advocates supported the increased wilderness area. And I don't think very many people around here would have thought that was possible when we started. This stand is a good example of the, the type of forestry we're trying to promote. We practice what we call best tree management, and we, where we focus on what we're leaving behind, not what we're taking. My name's John Frederick. I've lived in Colbridge, Montana for 34 years. As far as wildlife goes, it's the grizzly bears are the big attraction here. They, they value bears up here, which isn't everywhere, but they really do up here. What I worry about especially is development. More houses, more people, more pets, more people that don't know how to deal with bears, and people just unfamiliar with the area, they don't have a feeling for it. We have proposed wilderness, but they're not federally designated as yet. The Whitefish Range needs the protection of wilderness. The grizzly bears here can spend time in southeast British Columbia, then come down into the Whitefish Range, and then cross into Glacier National Park and go up into Waterton Park in southwest Alberta. And you're still talking about one individual bear. Part of the motivation behind the Whitefish Range Partnership and the work that's being done there is that in British Columbia, north of the boundary, the provincial government there sacrificed, gave up their oil and gas and mining rights in their portion of the range and the watershed. There's actions that are taking place on both sides of the border that are actually raising the bar for the landscape increasing the ecological integrity of the landscape to ensure that it is this way into the future. I think it gave me a real clear voice to speak in behalf of the last of the roadless area on the northern third of the Whitefish Range. I'm a real wilderness person, and, and but I also have been on a working end of a chainsaw and worked in the woods and operated a small sawmill so up there. So I have been on both sides of the fence. I expected from the motorized people some resistance, but you know, at the, at the end of the collaborative when we all voted, they didn't totally oppose wilderness either. So everybody walked away from the table with more than what they came with. And I thought that was really positive. There is, there is room for consensus. You know, there's room for a viable timber industry. We don't have to keep litigating everything, you know. We need to sit down at the table and we need to hash out and work out workable solutions. And it needs to be done on a local level. Forests are, are intended to be managed for multiple use benefits, and one of those benefits is providing fiber for the needs of society. Ultimately, the plan we came up with, I think, was a very good plan. It was a balanced plan. It, it, it looked at all the competing uses up there and found a place in the landscape for just about everybody. I think the Forest Service is looking for new ways that they can engage the public in a more collaborative and inclusive way. And I think the partnership is a good example of one way that a community can do that. 
I do think that we all learned that conflict doesn't get you anywhere, but actually trying to listen and understand other people's issues and then come up with solutions is a positive way to work. I hope that it's enduring. I hope it uh, helps to mitigate the timber wars in this part of the world and maybe lead to more and better agreements in other national forest lands. Right now, the animals have space, we got space, and we're all friends.